touch upon some of these issues, regulation, why we need these regulations and uh, biosafety measures and these are the different concerns uh, that uh, many times uh, we answer all of them before this event is cleared for federal cultivation but still then uh, institutions are involved in long term studies also just like what I mentioned like long term study on particularly microorganisms uh, particularly earthworms people think that uh, earthworms will be vanished if you start cultivating BT crops in fact uh, I told you, you know, in our university only for the last uh, seven seasons we are maintaining these uh, BT plots as well as non BT plots practically there is no difference between uh, the earthworm population or earthworm development from that one and also the total microflora whether it is bacterial population or uh, fungal uh, population or even soil enzymes for that matter I think they are we are uh, monitoring every season so that even if it is long term because you remember uh, uh, I, I think uh, during introduction also they told I had an experience in uh, working in uh, Rothamsted which is one of the oldest research station in the world they have maintained more than 150 years old experimental plots of applying only organic manures and not uh, fertilizers like N, B, K separately more than 150 years now so even these uh, uh, BT and non-BT plots we want to maintain like that so that over years who knows what will happen, what kind of uh, implications will be there maybe after 10 years or 20 years that also we would like to study so with that uh, intention only I think we have started so far this is the 8th season we have not found any market difference in the microbial population or on the earthworm uh, growth and development in these things and in fact uh, as far as regulation is concerned this EP Act of 1986 is being uh, currently enacted for the release of uh, or clearance of these GMOs but there is one bill which is pending probably most of you must have, we, uh, have read this Biotechnology Regulatory Authority of India BRI which is going to be tabled which will be the nodal uh, authority for clearance of these GMOs in future if at all it is going to be cleared in the parliament and these are the concerns which will be evaluated and the different criteria will be there uh, elaborate studies from all the institutions will be taken into account before they clear these but this is the mechanism of, of uh, evaluation of these transgenics in our country wherein we have a IBSC that is institutional biosafety committee will be there this is at the institution level where the uh, research will be carried out and our review committee on genetic manipulation will be there in the government of India and GEAC is also a government of India body and state biotech coordination committee and district committees are uh, in the state levels so now uh, even if uh, it has to be cleared for uh, evaluation state governments have to give clearance for even testing purpose also you must be reading some of the states have cleared some of the states are sitting on the fence some of the states are totally said no this is the situation in India as far as other crops other than cotton now I'm, when I talk about the clearances in future I am talking of other than cotton crops because cotton has been cleared by government of India since 2002 for uh, any event or any product from cotton whether it is uh, uh, BT or whether it is herbicide tolerance those things will be cleared because already it has been cleared by government of India these two ministries are uh, handling the department of environment as well as Department of Biotechnology, a rigorous procedure will be there and uh, what professor is going to ask about those things will be looked out uh, by this uh, RCGM body which takes care of all the uh, studies taken out in support of clearance of such events before they clear it. These are all the biosafety experiments on practically all the uh, possible test animals like fish, hen or rabbit or even cow, birds, these things will be evaluated and these data will be subject, uh, submitted to that RCGM before they finally clear these products. And even uh, we are also taking care of this, the pollen flow studies, even this will be also done by them and submit and we are maintaining this in our uh, university so that any possible outcrossing will be there. That this is also one of the apprehensions. and what if BT gene is uh, outcrossed with some of the wild weeds which are related to cotton like malvaceous weeds because cotton belongs to malvaceous family there are some uh, weeds which belong to malvaceous family any chance because hardly outcrossing is there 1% or something 
even if there is there, to what extent, uh, how long it can, uh, the pollen can go from Bt field to non-Bt field. So that is why we have distance up to 10 meters, 15 meters, 20 meters like that. These experiments are going up. We have not seen any crossing of this uh, Bt pollen. As I was mentioning about the soil microflora from both uh, Bt as well as non-Bt, who are almost, this is the last season, uh, microflora data wherein uh, we don't find any difference between Bt and non-Bt as far as bacterial population is concerned. Similarly for fungal population also, we are not finding any market difference in the total uh, fungal spores that are normally found in the rhizosphere. Uh, as I mentioned, even for uh, earthworms also, there is absolutely no problem to the growth and development of the earthworms because earthworms are the ones which are naturally occurring animals which can take care of the soil fertility in uh, natural soils. If it is to be damaged by this Bt cultivation over a longer period, this is a major uh, threat for cultivation of uh, Bt crops over a longer period. So that is why we are uh, rigorously watching after every season, even in the middle of the season also, we mo uh, monitor this uh, earthworm population and other uh, uh, fauna also. These rapids, these studies have been done before clearance, uh, uh, particularly any irritate, irritation or uh, skin uh, irritation will be there. Rabbits are the best uh, animals to be tested and uh, they have not found anything, even on rats they have uh, not found any toxic uh, effects. Guinea pigs have been tried, they have not found any toxic effects, including broiler chickens. Because ultimately though we say, uh, when we talk about uh, BT, uh, what we call uh, corn or maize, uh, that is a major poultry field. So there, uh, I think I will show a couple of uh, reports also wherein it has not found uh, any effect on this thing. Fish has been also tested on Bt and non-Bt, particularly cow and goat. These are all safe because of the one uh, principle that I showed you. None of these animals and other things, they have a alkaline pH in their stomach. If any group of animal or species, if it is having alkaline pH, that has to be rigorously tested. Let me tell you that. Because that is the very principle on which this Bt is working. Because these proteins are soluble there. We have nearly about 2,000 odd scientific papers wherein uh, the safety of GM crops has been well reported in all the peer reviewed journals throughout the world. But unfortunately, we have failed to compile and uh, tell the public when they talk or debate on the safety of these things. That is why we think that uh, scientists, though we give a lot of time for the development of this technology, we have to concise or compile all such informations and debate in such forums and tell the public this is the issue, this is the thing. That's why when I just uh, listened to Professor about uh, today's report on uh, Bt cotton is affecting uh, increased suicide rates in India. It is done by University of California Berkeley group. Professor was asking is it a fact? So we have to see, I have to go through that uh, paper because we have been also compiling a lot of information on, uh, on the advantages of Bt crops in India. But why they selected only uh, what you call dryland uh, situation for this study? Because we say when it is Bt cotton, cotton is meant for irrigated or more favorable situation. Though we have a lot of uh, rain fed area, but now we always say because these hybrids always they require more favorable situation, whether it is fertilizers, nutrients or moisture. We say it is irrigated condition. Anyway, this uh, evidence for safety and uh, the 70 percent of the processed food uh, almost uh, in the world it comes from the GM now and there are uh, several reports look at this poultry science uh, reported way back in 2007 this is another study feeding animals with GM crops already debates have been there and based on the data only they have concluded that uh, this poultry feeds out of this Bt maize or herbicide tolerant uh, corn or maize is more safe. So, just I have shown the titles of these and also several international bodies which have debated or which have given their version uh, on uh, the food safety from these GM crops, whether it is American Association of Advancement of Science or European Commission or Royal Society of Medicine. These are all uh, for uh, use of these GM foods. European Commission also it says the main conclusion can be this is more safe. Royal Society of Medicine is also concluding the same thing. And in future, we are going to have a lot of uh, scope for this GM technology, particularly 
you know about other things if we concentrate more on uh, tackling this uh, drought situation or flood situation or even pesticide already we have good examples they can solve the problems because drought is there throughout our country we have nearly 70% of area under rain fed there are already uh, works using the drought genes which are inducing drought for the crops so i think we can focus more on that but not necessarily only drought even flood situation because today we say that we are talking about drought within another one or two weeks we will be having flood like situation so this technology can also introduce flood tolerant genes for the crops to survive standing water or for a week or at an intermittent period even if there is standing water there will not be any effect on the road so these are the challenges uh, i will quickly go over because of course population will be decreasing and yields will be lost but uh, this technology can provide some of the solutions that is uh, one good advantage and now we are talking about in future second gen i will just take a few minutes second generation gm crops biofortification golden rice you must have read we know we uh, particularly in all this uh, asia and africa we have this uh, problem of uh, blindness this beta carotene has been uh, introduced uh, in this golden rice and uh, that can solve the problem of nutrition so this is the secondary uh, because of the beta carotene pathway you can see uh, in rice it is missing but because of this gm technology they can introduce this uh, so that they can uh, increase the beta carotene content which is a precursor for vitamin a so this golden rice uh, is one uh, promising uh, technology which will come in years to come already a network has been created and they are back crossing with our indian genotypes all over rice uh, programs in the entire country they are taking care of this technology by crossing to their local genotypes so that we are going to have uh, the genotypes which can take care of uh, this uh, blindness which is uh, more prevalent in asia and africa this is golden rice uh, just network uh, i have touched upon these are the scientists who are involved from china and uh, switzerland and another uh, crop of course potato they have uh, transformed with uh, some uh, nutritional uh, qualities and uh, this ammonia acid modification and also even in gm rice with iron biofortification can be there so that will also take care of iron requirement of the crop because rice is the major staple crop for uh, asia so anything that we need uh, from the external uh, supplement that can be taken care if this uh, gm rice with uh, iron biofortification can be there i i think i touched upon this uh, flavor saver and also already our scientists in india also are coming up with uh, this uh, enhancing self life for tomato and these uh, gm tomatoes are more uh, healthy and uh, higher self life and uh, next third generation gm crops this is one area i am sure some of you must have read in uh, papers or uh, some press uh, coverage is wherein vaccines can be produced from the plants you can just think of uh, tricks they are there for uh, any of these uh, diseases like hepatitis b or these things if it is injected in banana you just eat one banana you don't have to take a break this will be a third generation gm crop people are already working on that and uh, it is going to be order of the day when you just eat one banana or any one fruit which you like it and that will take care of the injections in future days so even pharma industries animals i think even goats uh, have been given different uh, modifications to come out with products which are similar to human milk so this is also another uh, technology which is waiting in future for third generation human gene in goats so i think uh, this looks uh, though whether they can come i think they are already particularly in pharma industry this gm technology has been widely used already it's not that it is uh, maybe for the agriculture crops it is for the first time they are using it but in pharma industries already whatever the tablets and other things that we are taking even insulin what we are using it for this diabetes it has come out of this gm technology only because nearly all this 20 uh, human insulin diabetes these are already approved they have all come out of this gm technology but in future there are already more than 100 and odd number of events which are there out of this gm technology for uh, controlling uh, particularly the recent uh, outbreak like h1n1 and all these viral diseases they are all trying in different uh, stages of uh, trials 
this technology is being used. So pharma industry has already utilized this one. So that is why with this conclusion I think our university is uh, empowered with all the best of the art technology to take care of this transformation with the vision of uh, uh, Karnataka state government. In fact it is supported when uh, Krishna was the chief minister with a five crore support for development of uh, Institute of Agri Biotechnology wherein we are having the best of facilities that are there in the uh, western world as far as carrying out this kind of uh, experimentation. We are having uh, almost uh, ready um, events with uh, cotton, pigeon pea, brinja and tomato. And other than this transformation, we are also having this uh, non-transformation technology. That's what our ministry is always uh, for it. When you are unable to convince your public, at least you make use of this technology for supplementing your own conventional methods. You use marker-assisted selections which can reduce the time frame. They are also ready in groundnut, red gram and sorghum marker resistance selection materials. So we are going to have new improved varieties or hybrids which have been developed with the use of marker resistance selections. I, I think in the first slide I showed you, it takes about 10 to 12 years for conventional method with marker resistance selections also. We can reduce at least 4 to 5 years time frame. By that way, I think we can benefit the farmers at large. Thank you very much for your patience. answer one question which is often coming in the press amongst other things that is that the farmer loses control over his seed is obligated to buy only from specific companies and therefore he loses very important uh, independence in decision making yes sir i think uh, you must be aware there are two types of crops self pollinated crops and cross pollinated crops and the varieties and hybrids this technology has been put into hybrids. So when you are using hybrids, this all cotton, what I am talking about is all hybrids. So necessarily you have to go back to the same company or hybrid because once you grow hybrids, you cannot use it for the next season. Only if it is a variety, if it is self-pollinated, you can use the seeds. In this connection, let me tell you, uh, there was some confusion, I am sure uh, you didn't mention uh, the name, Terminator G. Terminator. Yeah, Terminator G. It was a concept by Monsanto. Once they introduce this G, it will not be having viability for the next generation. Ultimately, they are, ultimately all these present BT technologies are from Monsanto. Our public uh, BT hybrids or BT varieties are in the various stages, but we are not at uh, really, we made one attempt from our university, we, it had some problems and we, we do it. But they wanted to introduce the terminator gene. But in the present BT hybrids or varieties, varieties are not there, let me again uh, reiterate, BT varieties are not there. If it is BT variety, you don't have to go back to again uh, next season for cultivation, but it is there in China. China has become successful model for BT technology because they have introduced BT technology in varieties. That's what uh, our university is also focusing on developing varieties. If it is a variety, you can use it for at least 4 to 5 generations without a problem. Since this technology